No, just getting prepared here. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm ready to start any time, but I'm I'm also totally relaxed, and you can take it off at your own whenever. <laughs> I mean, doing the individual uh, questions and stuff. Uh, I don't think we need to do why we're waiting. It's time to start, so you might as well start. I'll do some house cleaning and discussion after your session. And we've been at it a while. I think it was good to have a break. Yeah, we, we should we should have a discussion. Um, for example, the word word fail here. I see that someone doesn't like uh, me using the word fail, and um, I always think of education as kind of uh, an experiential art. And I have my own ways of. Um, communicating with kids and not all of my ways will work for for you guys so um, I'll suggest what I do and then you take what you like and you leave the rest uh, the, the way the reason I like using the word fail um, is I really like to um, remove the stigma of failure from the math classroom and so I hit that directly head-on and I use the word failure and I, um, in a kindergarten class, I use the word fail and I use it for the entire class. I don't use it for a single child. So whenever we're all together and we're all trying to solve something and we end up failing, um, I'll use the word for myself and I'll use the word for, oh, we failed. And it's, a, it's an emotional experience that I want the kids to, to uh, um, get. And I also want to be communicating that you know, failure is a part of life and we get up, we dust ourselves off and we get over it. And I find that that is a useful thing to communicate, um, but that is, you know, there's, there's different, different ways that you can take this and I'm not gonna be insulted if you don't use everything um, that I present in this, in this uh, um, meeting. Okay, so let's uh, jump right in. Uh, is there any any other general questions that you think that um, I should cover? I didn't read through all of the chat. I just saw that one. Is there anything general that I should cover before I get started? Okay. So this is a puzzle. We're going to deal with three puzzles in the next hour and a bit. The first puzzle is for grade two students and above. The next puzzle will be for grade maybe four students and above. It uses multiplication. And then the last one is going to use division and it will be for grade five students and above, let's say. None of the puzzles are solved. I don't know the answers and nobody knows the answers for um, any of them. Uh, and, uh, you know, mathematicians have worked on them, but that doesn't mean that they're not just great for, for, for young kids. So in this one, um, we have, we start off this, this puzzle is called glue. And we start off with two one by one squares. And then each turn you get to add. First of all, you're gonna be adding a two square, then a three square, then a four square, then a five square. And the rules are that whenever you add a square, that all of the squares that it shares an edge length with, whenever you add them up, that's going to equal to the value uh, in this case two of the new square. So how would we add a three square? Well, we could add a three square like this, or we could add a three square like this, or uh, let's see what I did. I, I did it like this. The only rule for adding the square, the, for the size of it, is that the size of the square has to be at most the number inside. So this is the three square. It can't be a four by four. It could be a, it could just be a little square, but it can't be bigger than a three by three square, okay? So I'll just go through an example and then we can try to do better than the example. So here is adding four, one plus three, adding five, one plus four, adding six, five plus one, adding a seven, I can add seven there, an eight I can add over there, a nine I can add there, 
at 10, I can add there. And 11, I can add up there. 12 over here. And where could I add a 13? 14. Where six can and I add eight. a 13? Yeah, six and eight is 14. So I'm ready for the 14, but can I add a 13 somewhere or am I stuck? For the 13. Oh, um, uh, nine. I might be stuck. No. Yeah, nine and four. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. So there we go. I can do that. Uh, and then 14, we can add the 14 down there or where, where you wanted to, uh, right over there. And the 15, we could add there. And then I think we're stuck. Yeah. Okay. So the idea um, is to get as high as you can. Okay. And, okay. And it, is this easy? Is this easy for anyone? Is it easy for computer scientists? Is it easy for mathematicians? Is it easy for grade two kids? No, it's not easy for any of the above groups. Okay, but is this a perfect activity to engage your full spectrum of grade two students? You know, I know whenever you, first of all, encounter grade two students and you have to teach them addition, you know that 20% of your kids already know how to add because of the home environment. Okay, so you need to engage those kids. And this is a perfect activity that helps you deal with the whole spectrum of students from those that you know, are, are having trouble counting from grade one and those who they already know how to add. You don't need to teach them how to add, but you don't want to take them and teach them multiplication. You wanna teach them a puzzle like this that they can focus on, on being deflected into tough problem solving. And this is not an easy puzzle to solve. And I don't know the answer. I don't know how high you can get. I've presented this puzzle to mathematicians and uh, um, computer scientists, and we still don't have an answer for how high we can get. So um, how do you want to start? You, you start with two one by ones. You can place them anywhere you want. Um, so we could place them, well, you know, we could place them here. And then the only restriction is that they can't be too far apart because of course we need to place this uh, two in here. Okay, so we could do, do it something like this. We could place it like, like this. So you could choose. Um, you guys can annotate on my screen to indicate where you want me to build certain squares and then I can go ahead and build them. So again, uh, normally in the, in the classroom, I would be going around and it's right now it's Rena's turn and then it's Marge's turn. And I, I, I'm protecting those kids from others raising their hands. We're adults here, so um, we're, I'm not going to do my standard grade two technique, but just so you know that that's normally the way that I would do this. So can, uh, can you tell me where you want uh, this other grade one, this other um, number one, and just make the first few moves somebody. So you can annotate and just uh, tell me where to do that. Do you want the, that one moved? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, you, you can make the first few moves. So so, well, so go ahead and make the first few if you're happy well, with that maybe, one. Maybe, what about that one, um, put it um, diagonally of the other one going to the right side, it doesn't matter which way, yeah. Okay, done. And then the two, it doesn't matter if the two is here or here, it does matter the size. Do you want to okay. choose a size, this size or a smaller? Probably smaller. Could, smaller, okay. There we go. Okay, okay. next is uh, three. Three. Go ahead and uh, you, you just keep on going until someone else volunteers to take over and um, you can just keep on going. Where would you like to put the three? Uh, uh, we definitely need it to be- no, a, the, the Number three always have to be square and not a rectangle. Correct, <laughs> all of these are, are gluing squares. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Just we um, can put it here. Um, I'm not seeing your annotation. Put it next to the uh, the right of the two. Yes, right yeah. there. Got it. Okay. Keep on going. Where um, do you want four. me? To... Oops. Oops. 
Okay, tell me where you want the four and the size of the four. The four can be size one by one, two by two, three um, by three, or four by four, but not one bigger. One plus three is four underneath. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, right there. And what size would you like it? It could be- No, smaller. This size? No, this smaller. Size. This size? Yeah, right there. Okay. Um, where do you want and then the five? One and uh, four on the left side. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, this is one plus one plus four, which is six. So this does not work. Oh. Uh oh, oh, we're stuck. On so are we stuck? Between the, the two and the three. Oh yeah, oh, you could do it yeah, there. Yeah, right there. Uh -huh. And do you want this size or what size would you like? Even with the three, three lines. Same size, okay. And uh, six, where do you want to put the six? Between the one, the five. Okay. Like a skinny. And how big would you like it? No, smaller. Small? No, not, um, can you do that? You can do it, any any size smaller oh, okay. than a six by six uh, or smaller. He just said, he just said not to make it rectangle shape. They all have to be squares. Yeah, so, and it, the, the six cannot be bigger than a six by six, but it can be smaller. We we can do this if you want. It's totally your choice. That might work. Okay. Um, seven. And you have the seven right there. We could do, no, let's do the six plus one. Because if we do the three plus four, it's, yeah, right there. I don't mind where you go. You, you guys can, uh, you know what? I'm going to make a duplicate. So we're going to do one of these here, and then I'm going to do the other one um, up here. So I have these now both recorded in case we need to come back again. We had a difference of opinion. So now we've got these two ideas, and uh, we, can, we can go forward with one, and then if it didn't work, we can go forward with the other. So uh, go ahead. Uh, with eight. We'll try this one first and then we'll go to the other one. We could try this, um, try, okay. yeah. How big? Then uh, nine. How big for the eight? Two by two. Two by two, done. Okay, nine. Mm. We're stuck at eight. Stuck. I think we're stuck at nine. Okay. So what if we were what if we had the six on the so the seven oh, on the good. other side? Oh the six on the other side here? No, the seven. The seven. Yes, put the Oh the six seven? Okay, I'll go to the other seven. Okay, here we have yeah, the seven. right there. Okay, so and then now we're doing eight. We could do five uh seven. The eight would stay over here by five and three. Three, yeah, we could do that. And then the nine would be the seven, one, and one. Can you right do three? There's still the four right there, so it's not going to work. You still have to add the four. Yeah. On. Is it a square only? Only yes. square. Yes. yes. Oh, oh, okay. okay. Oh, yeah, so this doesn't work because this is uh, actually nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So this would be a 13 here because of the four. Um, okay, or are we messed up totally? Get rid of the seven. <laughs> Put the six by four, one, one. Okay, so you want me to go backwards? Um, getting yeah. rid of everything. Um, up to the like, six. Back to the six? Uh -huh. Put it right there by four, one, one, the six. Okay. And make it um, three it has by to three. Be at least this big, but it could be bigger. Maybe right there for now. Then this, the seven would be six plus one. Okay. Four to four plus three. Or four plus three. Yeah. Make it smaller. Eight. Yeah. Four plus three. Okay. Eight. We won't have nine again. Hmm. Hmm.
So you can see how valuable these small numbers are. It, yeah, it, so they should really, make them bigger. Yeah, yeah. I think making the smaller ones bigger is, is going to help you guys. Um, so if we go back, um, I'm just going to, let's see, annotate, clear yeah. all. Okay, there we go. Okay. Um, so uh, let's, let's start again and Having having the two so small, uh, I think that that's uh, that's the, the one two that is just so valuable. Two and so three. You want to make the two um, bigger. I don't know about the three, but certainly the two. Uh, I don't know if you want to have the three a three by three, but certainly the two. It's so valuable that territory that just adds two. Um, yeah, I think that that's going to help. But I don't know if this is good or this is good or. I, these are things I don't know here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's try it like that. Let's start it off like that, just the way you had it. Put the one back right there on top of the one. Oh, no. Okay. We need it on the other side. So one of you likes it on the other side. So we'll, we'll try. we'll try both. Now th this uh, this can clearly be a whole classroom activity for as long as the students are engaged. Uh, like I said, we don't know how high you can get. So th this is not gonna be something that the kids are going to solve even a, for a whole month, for two months. Th this could be an entire grade two year that this puzzle could just be open. And you could just say, you know, any kids who find a higher number this week, <laughs> just share it. And you've automatically engaged those top kids in the class who aren't used to being engaged. You've already found an activity that totally engages them and can keep on engaging them um, month after month after month. Just a, a very simple description. What this took us five minutes to describe the rules here. And you have an activity that can last the entire year that mathematicians haven't solved. So this is extremely effective an extremely effective problem to engage the whole classroom. This is Shelly, and I like to see this as, I wanna say competitive. I teach in block periods, so I have four classes throughout the day. And so I would take it as an opportunity to maybe compete against each other, class per class, who can get to the highest. Yes, and then see I, I like what you said, class to class. O often competition within a class, um, I, I can go either way on it, but certainly competing classroom to classroom, um, I've had extremely positive experiences with that, where kids are just, they want to help out their, their classmates because we're all on the same team. Uh, and I think that's a really interesting direction. Okay, so back to uh, the puzzle. And, and I can stop here and go on to the next puzzle. You guys understand this. We don't have to spend any more time on it. You can see it's interesting. You can see that um, you can imagine uh, your kids creating this beauty. Like this is physically beauty, uh, physical, physically beautiful. Uh, instead of just rewarding the child who gets the best answer in the class, the highest answer, often what I will do is I will instead highlight the most beautiful solution, a subjective score. So I, I, I say, look at this beautiful work that this child has done. Um, yeah, it's maybe it's not quite as high as this other person, um, but it's beautiful and they took care. Uh, often students, uh, whenever they are creating these beautiful works of, of mathematics, they'll want to take a step back and they want to redo their work. So they, they've got an answer, let's say they've got an answer like this, but it's messy. They want to take that, 
messy work and they want to copy it. Is that a useful activity for the math classroom, just to copy something so it looks more beautiful? In my world, that is absolutely a useful skill to be, to be proud enough of your mathematics work that you want to spend time to make it look beautiful. I'm, I'm ecstatic whenever students care that amount for their work. That actually became a discussion this past week because when students, even we know as I guess in general, math is a different language, but the syntax and the symbolism when they write it to process their solution, sometimes um, exponential form in algebra starts to look like mixed fractions and they don't differentiate the base to the exponent and it just becomes one big thing. And so that was discussion this past week was how can you make your work uh, valuable to you so that you can communicate what it's supposed to be rather than some, some other answer. So beautiful work is, is something that is uh, to be celebrated. If you would like me to uh, do an unsolved problem now to do with exponents, um, I'm, I'm happy to do that, Shelley. Uh, would you like to do a little deflection over there and play with exponents for a while? Sure. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, because I don't have the presentation ready, I'm just going to share my document camera. Here we go. So is this um, already created somewhere, these block, the glue, square glue, or whatever that's called, the activity? Um, yeah, so I, 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 <clears throat> I have that on MathPickle. Um, uh, maybe it's just, uh, yeah, I, I think it's on the MathPickle website. It's one of my la latest puzzles. Uh, yeah. OK, let's just go with that. Um, right. Okay, there we go. Okay, so um, this is a, an unsolved problem, how to do this efficiently. But um, the idea is uh, I have two groups of kids. I have one group of kids that is using ones, brackets, multiplication, and addition. I have another group of kids who are using ones, brackets, exponents, and addition. And they're competing against each other. And we're trying to reach numbers using the fewest number of ones as possible. So let's uh, name a number, Shelley, any, any number. Don't make it super big, uh, like between 30 and 60, let's say. Um, and let's, uh, let's try it. 50. 50. Okay, so 50 is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, that's seven ones, um, up to 1 plus 1, so this is 7 squared plus 1. You used 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 ones, so your score is 10. Okay. That's for this group here. This will be the orange group. And the other group, I'm going to say that the other group is going to be the blue group. And the blue group can use multiplication, but can't use powers. So this is the blue group. And let's see what the blue group can do. The blue group can say that 50 is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, that's 5, times bracket 1 plus 1, 2, that's, uh, that's going to be 10 times 5. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So the blue group has scored 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The blue group does not do as well. The blue group has a score of 12. Okay, so this is interesting. What numbers uh, does the blue group win? What numbers does the uh, orange group win? 
brackets can be nested. Uh, so for example, we can have something for like 100. We can have 100 is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 um, up to the 1 plus 1 plus 1 brackets up to the 1 plus 1. For all of you in um, elementary school for whom this is perplexing, I'm going to be finished this in 1 minute 30 seconds. I just wanted to respond to Shelley's interest in coming up with an unsolved problem that can be played with in her um, uh, um, junior high or high school classes. So this will be finished in a minute and 30 seconds. Uh, this is 3 squared, which is 9, plus 1 is 10, 10 squared, which is 100. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So even better than the 50, we can get to 100 in just with just eight ones. So there's a, a, just a, a, an interesting little puzzle set. Um, and I don't know what the answers are. Uh, this is, this puzzle here is, um, this one here is well known. Uh, competing between the two, that's, that's something that, uh, that I've played with and uh, enjoyed immensely. So that's it. Any, any comments from anybody? I will now get back to standard programming. <laughs> Good. Okay. Thank you. And thank you for everyone for allowing that moment. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, just cancel that. Okay. And I'm going to go to, this is going to be a grade four puzzle now. Okay. So this is um, Mondrian. And this is uh, Math Pickle's most well-known puzzle. It's called Mondrian Art Puzzles. Here are some Mondrian dresses. And here we go. Uh, the Mondrian Art Puzzle, uh, I usually get kids, instead of explaining the rules to begin with in my grade four classroom, instead I just jump right in and I will ask, uh, um, um, let's go for Ursula. Ursula, uh, you get to choose the first rectangle. Um, how big do you want it to go? How, how far across? So it could go two, three, or the whole way across. So you can choose that, just one, could just stay there. How far, how far across? Ursula and nobody knows the rules um, for this puzzle. One is good. One is good. And how far down? Two, three, all the way down. So again, we're just engaging kids. They don't know the rules for what they're trying to do. Instead, I'm giving them an investment. They are going to create this first bit of artwork. Um, and uh, uh, let's say that it ends up like that. Um, uh, Laura Delmar, go ahead. Um, this next uh, rectangle, how far across? It can go one, two, or three. How far across would you like it to go? Um, three. Three, okay. Again, you don't know the rules. And how far down, Laura? One, uh, two, all the way to the bottom. Three, how far? So let's say that uh, it goes three. And then this last one, I ask another child and the other child is like this. So what, what's the score? The score is equal to your largest rectangle, which is three by three. That's an area of nine. Your largest area minus your smallest area. So that is nine minus three. Your score is six. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. So can we get a better score than, than six? Your largest rectangle minus your smallest. Now, someone should, one of your kids is probably gonna 
suggest something. So let, let's see, go ahead, try to try to beat a square of six. So whoever said, mm, you get to, to go first. Less, so does that have to be less than um, the six or more than the six? Yeah, we're trying to get as low a score as possible. Oh, okay. Okay. So your biggest rectangle minus your smallest rectangle. I still haven't told you all of the rules for how to get up, for how to do this. So again, I don't tell all the rules at the start of the puzzle. Okay. So keep on going. Um, two by know, two. Avira, two by two. Okay. Now, of course, why don't we just do all two by twos? And the reason is, is that you cannot have two rectangles of identical dimensions. You can have a four by, a two by two and a one by four. Those are different dimensions. So that, that's allowed, okay? But you're not allowed two rectangles with the same dimensions. Mm. That's the last rule, okay? So fi finish it off, somebody. Uh, what would you like to uh, do? Elvira, you're welcome to finish it off if you'd like. <laughs> two by three. Two by three, and that would be here. And, and then the rest would be. Right. And what's your score? Largest area minus smallest area. Four. Yeah. This is an area of six, an area of two. So this gets a score of four, which is better than the previous one, a score of six. Okay. Uh, let's do a, a larger one. Do we have to use all the four colors? You can use as many rectangles as you want. You can use just two, you can use 10. There's no constraint on the number of rectangles that you can use. Hmm. So you, you keep on going over and, and someone else will stop in. This is not the way I would run a standard grade four <laughs> classroom. You understand that I would make sure that every child is contributing, um, mm -hmm. but we're all adults here. So go, go ahead and you're, you're in control. Uh, four by two. Four by two. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this one. Two by three, I guess. Okay. And then two by two. Okay. Then one by six. Okay. Mm, can they can't be the color. same, right? So three by three. Three by three. Three by three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then one by two and then a one. One by two. And a one, and I just have to change the color again. Let's click that. Uh, and a one. Let's go with this color here. There we go. Okay. So what's what's your score here? Eight, nine. Nine. Eight. Yeah, this eight. score is eight. This is your biggest rectangle, mm -hmm. nine. This is your smallest, one. So you scored eight. Exactly right. Um, is there a small change that you could do that would get your score a bit better? Probably make that four by three, the purple one. Uh, four by three, okay, let's try that. So what's your score now? Oh, it's still going to be. It's still eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So is there a way to make this original one a little bit better? Make that by maybe four by four. Four by four. Uh, which one? Uh, let's see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, I, I, I think... So if we made this. Make that one four by four. Is this or we can just make it go all the way down. 
Oops. Or just going to do two okay. colors, three colors. Uh, this one all the way down? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, make the green go all the way down to the inner blue. Right. Like this? All the way down, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and that's got a score of what? Well, oh, that's going to be higher than eight. Twelve? It's going to be twelve? Twelve. Yeah. 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 So this one and this one. So are, the, le the, one. Less, the less colors you're going to use, you're going to get a higher number. If the so that's, a, that's a great hypothesis. So um, you're going to tell the kids, uh, how, like how many, uh, or, or the kids are going to tell you, come up with this hypothesis. Like, I think we should use more colors, uh -huh. not less. More colors would be the best, yeah. 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 So that, that's a hypothesis that you want to highlight. You don't want that to just slip through and not be identified as a hypothesis. That would be a, a student who you just want to celebrate. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Maybe that's right. Or, the, or it could be the lesser partition. Then come up with a bigger difference um for sorry to, to say it again if you have a lesser partition like you only have two partitions there yeah a two yeah same color you divide that with two colors only or and then you come up with a bigger difference Right. So, I mean, this would be a bigger difference here, right? Um, but that, that's going in the wrong direction. Like that's, I, I guess another interesting question, which is, is very easy to solve, is what's the biggest score that you could get? Um, and the biggest score, uh, that would be something. But it's, it's, that's not a really interesting question. So if we're going to do it like that, then we're go our score is going to be higher. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, it, it's much more interesting to find a low score than to find a high score. A high score is always shaped like this. This is, this is always the best. Let's just grab this little one by one here. Mm -hmm. This is always the high score. It looks exactly so the same as this. Be, yeah, I guess it would be up to the teacher to decide if she wants her students to look for the highest score possible, like 12 or the lowest score possible, then if they want the lowest score possible, then there would, they would have to use more colors. Yeah, the highest score is not an interesting puzzle. So it, it's something, if it comes up in class, it's just a quick deflection, and then kids should come up with this diagram. So it has a solution, which is nice. This, this is the solution, and it's the same solution no matter what your size of square. It'll look exactly like this with exactly three colors. Yeah. Um, oh, no, no, you could have more colors. That's true. Th this one could be split up into, you know, you could add a color here. It's not going to change the results. So it doesn't have to be two yeah. colors. Uh, so I think the more exciting way would try to get the more, I mean, the less score possible. Oh, for sure. That's the more exciting. Way. For sure it is. There's no, no question. This is, that's just, that's just a fun diversion. This one is extremely difficult to solve generally. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, yeah, quite, quite exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, again, I'm happy to leave this here or I'm happy if you guys want to try to solve um, something better than an eight, uh, than, than this to get lower mm -hmm. than a score of eight. Maybe it's good to try one more time. Um, I'm happy to go either way. Uh, I will say that the best that I could do was six. And I thought that was the best possible. And then one of my students came up with a score of five. Um, and that was after a year. So that, that was just like, great. <laughs> it was very surprising. And um, the same happened with uh, a seven by seven is, and that one, I think it was years before someone came up with a better solution than, than me. Um, now there, there, there was a computer scientist who got involved and then you, you ended up with optimal solutions into the 30s. Uh, but if you exclude those computer scientists, um, th and they still get stuck at 30, 
or 40 or 50 or whatever, but they, they can't go high either. So th this is an extremely complex problem. Um, nevertheless, it's perfect for a grade four classroom. It will engage your top kids and for your average kids, it's beautiful. And it's great for teaching multiplication. It's a backdrop. It, it's interesting. You, you think that you wanna make math easier. Um, and so you just want to teach multiplication and you don't want this complexity of Mondrian art puzzles. But actually, the number one thing is you want to make it engaging. And if it's more complex, if it's more difficult a problem, but it's more engaging, that's a good trade-off. So you, in, in my books, it's good to, to experiment with extremely tough uh, puzzles like this right away. You're teaching multiplication right away. You start with something like this. You already know that some of your class will already know how to multiply. So how do you not waste their time? And, and this is a perfect way to do it. You're not wasting their time. And the, the kids who uh, already are, who are struggling, um, they find this beautiful. And it's, it's just as good a place to learn multiplication as, uh, as any other. So good. Uh, I'm happy to, to stop here. I'm also happy to try once again. It's your choice. Um, Marge, I'll let you make the decision for the class. Do you want to try again on the 8x8, the 10x10, or would you like to go to a totally different puzzle? Okay, uh, Marge, it's not there. Ar Ariel, you can... Ariel Bondock, you can make a decision for the class. So wh whatever, whatever works for you. Do you want to try to solve this six by six better? Or do you want to go to a 10 by 10? Or would you like an entirely different puzzle? You've already seen this. You know how it works. It's time to try something else. Let's do a different puzzle. Different one, coming up. Let's go with this. Okay, what do we do with this? <laughs> yeah, this one here. Let me just puzzle. Okay. And this one, I'm just going to stop my share and then I'm going to share again. Um, yeah. Okay. So this one's called Picasso's Line, line Puzzles. And in this puzzle, okay. you start with a spiral. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, as you're starting up, you're you're doing a spiral. Here I've got a spiral up to 36. Okay. And then it's a man it's a matter of drawing paint strokes. And here is an example of some paint strokes. Mm -hmm. Any idea the rules for a paint stroke? This is for a grade six classroom or grade five classroom learning about division. Any idea about the rules for what each of these paint strokes, how, how I made them and what makes them acceptable? Is it just division? Yeah, it's, it's division. So mm -hmm. For example, here you see a 27. Here you see a 9. 27 divided by 9 is equal to the number of squares that are part of this paint stroke. There's three squares, so 27 divided by 9 is equal to 3. Mm. Does this work for 28? For this red path? Does this work? Mm. 3, 6, 7. Yeah, seven. Yeah, 28 divided by four is equal to seven. And there's seven red squares, a part mm -hmm. of that paint stroke. Does it work for the orange path? Six divided by one, two, three. Yeah. It works for the orange path. And lastly, for the blue path. 36 divided by 3 was equal to 12, and there's 12 orange squares. Mm -hmm. Does it work for the blue path? 25 divided by 7. 2 for 5. 
Mm -hmm. also works. 35 divided by seven is equal to five. So this, these are all correct paint strokes. What's your score? Your score is equal to the number of numbers that you have not managed to paint. And we have not managed to paint here um, all of nine. these numbers, all these light gray numbers, and there's nine of them. So our score is nine. And again, we're trying to find a way to get that number as small as possible. Mm. Again, I have no idea about the optimal solutions for, for this puzzle. So it's interesting to me, every mathematician that I've presented this to, it's not obvious to them either. So there's, there's nothing obvious here. This is the perfect puzzle for your grade five, grade four, grade six classroom, looking at division for the first time. It looks beautiful. The end result is beautiful. Even if a child does poorly and only manages to identify a few paint strokes, that child can still have the success of, oh, but it looks beautiful. So great puzzle. Right. Uh, some extra can I ask rules. You go something? ahead. Okay, yeah. Go ahead, Irlinda. Okay. Can you can you go? Can you explain the brown um, colored ones? Okay, I figured out the other ones. Okay, I'm still trying to yeah figure out the. Brown. So you look at the starting number three. Okay. And this is the path that you're going on, and you look at the final number. 36. 36 divided by 3 is 12. Oh. And oh. there's 12 orange squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's not a coincidence. That is a correct paint stroke that Picasso, you can say that Picasso has done. So can, the, can it be another path other than that path right there right now? Um, like, which, let's say, let's say, um, without doing the green, red, and blue for now, and you just start off at 36, since yeah. you're looking at the highest number, so you look at 36, and you're thinking what division or what number divides into 36, so you come up with 12. Yeah, so there's probably a way that you could start at two, maybe, and end with so 36. Can we, can we also do 36? Um, divided by another number other of than 12? Of course. So I will introduce a couple of other problems and puzzle, uh, a couple of other rules, and then we're going to, we're, we can experiment with exactly that. So the first rule okay, is... Okay, so with... Yeah? I'm sorry, interjected okay. again. Okay. So I'm still... So with your number patterns... Is that the ordered number? Is that how it's supposed to be? How it's supposed to stay? I mean, can you put the numbers in any order to try to? Can you rearrange the numbers? No, no, the numbers are fixed. They're in a spiral pattern. So can we do like 36 divided by two? Yeah, yeah, we could try to, but let's, let's try that. But let me just, first of all, introduce you to a couple of other rules. Um, this is an acceptable paint stroke, but this is not. And it's not for two reasons. First of all, you're surrounding some squares. You're not allowed to surround squares with your paint stroke. Uh -huh. And the second reason is that you're not allowed to have a total square all of the same color, a two by two square oh, all of the same color. Okay. So those are two extra rules. So that, those are, are just little rules that, that make the results more beautiful. So that's why they had to be there. So those are two extra rules that might not be obvious. Now, let's, uh, let's stop this. Uh, it, there's another attempt, but uh, let's stop this. And uh, now we've got enough rules, let's go and uh, solve it. So um, now I'm going to do this and screen share like this. There, okay. So. Uh, we're, we're dealing with the numbers 1 through 49 now. Would you like to go back to the 1 through 36? I can easily just get rid of these. Uh, if you would like to just do that. Let's, uh, so let me just do that. 
Okay, so I'll get rid of these and I'll get rid of these. And you want to try making a sphere. Okay. So I guess it would depend on the number you're dividing it by. Like let's say we did um, 36 divided by nine, that would be four, right? But there's no way you could get four there's spaces no way. between yeah. 36 and nine. That's right, they're too, they're too far apart. So mm -hmm. nine cannot be the start if 36 is the end. Exactly right. Um, is so, it possible to have four the start? if 36 is the end. Hmm, you find a way that that would work? have to swirl it somewhere nine places. <laughs> Try, go ahead. You can, you can name the numbers and I will highlight them. <laughs> the numbers in, in between don't really matter. It's all only the number of numbers that matter. So yeah. like going 17 or going 35, it really doesn't matter as far as solving it. Um, both, both directions will be fine. So let's just assume that we're going to go to 35. Um, okay, so nine, we do from 415 four to 34 to 35 to 36. But okay, so if we do from 5, 16 to 15, right? The, num the color can't overlap. It can't be in the square, yes. Yeah, it can't be in a yeah. square. Uh, we, can't, we can't do it like the way he has right here right now because there's no nine spaces in between there. Yeah, that's only five, so that's, that's incorrect. Correct, so we can't do that. So go up to three, color into three. So that's gonna be four. How about 20? So to try to complete this to 36. So I'm gonna say, uh, I'll color the end point. So that's the end point, and then this is the starting point. Um, so try to link up those two. And uh, if that's, how do, oh, how it's still do not gonna that? work because. Maybe go up to 12. It's only gonna be eight. And then to 13, will it be eight? Yeah, 13, 32, and 33. 32, 33. That works. 36 divided by four is nine. Mm -hmm. Solved. Okay. Um, can you solve any, can you find any other paths there? 15 divided by twenty. Five. 15 and five, you wanna try that? It's three, yeah. That work. But you said we can't color, we can't do that with 14, right? Uh, the same color can't be surrounded. Oh, okay, okay. So all blues can't be around a 14. Okay. But, but this is not surrounding, so this is fine. That works. Yep, that works as well. Anything else you see? I see five and 20. Five. Oh, and but 20. five. I was taken. Okay, but we, we can, I can copy this and we can, instead of that, we can do five and 20. So how did you want to do it? Just go down? Five. Oh, right. Yes. Either way. Like that. Is that good? Or you want to go across? I was thinking five. Eight, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I made a mistake. Uh, five and 20. Okay. So what, 18 divided by 9? 18 divided by 9? So two, again, by, two, by 2. 18 divided by 2, so just let me erase this one. You can see that you can't do all of these. You have to choose carefully which ones you want to do. So, um, so if we do 18 and 2, we have to find that's only 5. So that's impossible, okay. So let's say that you want to do that. How do we, how do you go about that? That has to be nine spaces, right? Yeah.
So what if we go around from two to 14? Is that seven? Would that be seven? Two, two, three, one, four, one, two, three. Oh four, yeah, five, there six, you go. Seven. Wow, that's an efficient use of uh -huh. numbers. Like, that looks awesome. Yeah, that, that's, that looks great. Mm -hmm. So you can see there's interesting decisions here. It looks beautiful. This, this kind of puzzle just excites me. It excites me a lot. Like I'm, I, I can't wait to get in here and to try to figure out the best way to patch these things together. But now it seems like we're kind of stuck because we used up all the smaller numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Which so, divides into the larger numbers. Yeah. So, or multiplies or what? Yeah, absolutely. So it looks good, but maybe it's not as good as keeping those uh, like. Because we're trying to make, we're trying to reduce the gray colors, right? The yeah. number of gray colors. You know, you, like can, 24 you into 6. All of these six. little ones. 4 into 6. So you, you get the feel. This is, it's not, not at all clear. And, and 1, can we do anything with 1? It doesn't look like we can do anything with 1. No. So. What about 27 down to 9? Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. That's definitely one we can do. Yeah. And that oh, might be it. 24 and 8, and then 2 and 1. 24 oh, yeah, 24 and 8. 8. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. I got and then it. 2 and 1. Oh, two good. Two. Yeah, let's not do that color. Okay, two and one. Yeah, I forgot about that too. Yeah. So our score is, we can just get rid of all of these. So our score is 10. So that's, that's pretty good. The, the score I showed you was nine and I spent quite a while trying to find it. So um, this is this is one that I did, and you can see I I was really saved by this uh, this enormous three, and then the seven just by chance it happened to fit in really nicely. <laughs> so that's yeah, okay. So I'm I'm happy to to jump up. We can we can jump up immediately to something uh, uh, different. I. Um, this one, I've put all of the numbers just in a kind of a standard uh, format. The, I think the more interesting puzzle is the one that you do the spirals. I think that's, uh, the, for sure, this one is, is much more difficult to solve. Uh, this one here, however, for, for kids that um, um, don't, need a, don't need to have that difficulty of the spiral, um, there's nothing wrong with starting to explore like this. It's not as interesting a problem, um, but for, for those kids that are just starting out, and uh, you could say, you know, if, if you've got, let's say, five kids who are struggling in the class and um, five, five kids who are elite, you could reward the kids at the bottom saying, you, can, you guys can be the only ones working on this uh, this uh, diagram, all the rest of the class are going to work on that. So you can disguise the fact that this is actually easier to work in um, for, for those kids. So do you, do you want to try solving this or shall we go on to something else? It's 1.30 now and I think um, I go to for another 15 minutes. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I, I would at most do another puzzle, but there's nothing wrong with just relaxing and trying to solve one of them. And 
just enjoying the social experience of problem solving together. Let's do another one. Another one, okay. These are interesting. Okay, so let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of Mondrian. I'm going to choose, let me see. I'm going to, I'll, I'll show you a different type of puzzle. So this one is one called second. So this one is on Math Pickle and it's called Mishap at um, Ven Zoo. I'm just going to talk to this just a second. Okay. What was the other one called? The first one was called Glue. Uh -huh. um, the second one uh, was, uh, was, I think it was called um, Using Ones. It's something oh. to do with ones, that, that uh, one that uh, you just had brackets and ones. Um, oh. Then we dealt with the Mondrian art puzzles, which is my most famous puzzle. And then we did the, uh, the last one was Picasso line drawings. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. There we go. Okay, so here we have mishap at Van Zoo, and we're going to be ordering some creatures for our zoo. And uh, this is uh, a great activity to showcase Venn diagrams can be much more complex and interesting than just the three by three Venn diagrams. Here, we're going to be deal dealing with a five question Venn diagram, not just a three question Venn diagram. And here are the questions we're going to ask about the animals coming into our zoo. Uh, the first question is, does it have exactly one hole? In this case, uh, this has two holes, this animal. So the answer is no. Um, has it rotational symmetry? Well, yeah, I can rotate it around here. And sure enough, it, it's the same thing. So yes, it has rotational symmetry. Does it have mirror symmetry? So can I reflect it across yeah. this line? No, it doesn't have uh, mirror symmetry in any direction. So nope. Does it have exactly 12 squares? Certainly not, this is much more, so that's a no. And is it taller than it is wide? Here it's uh, yes. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tall, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yes, it is taller than it is wide, so yes. So we are now going to be placing um, our animal into a Venn diagram. Here is the Venn diagram. So. This is uh, at a, that this wouldn't be a, for grade three students, you can see. This is for, for students um, who, for, that they could grapple with this complexity. So does it, uh, does it go in the middle? Let's see. It goes inside the purple region and inside the tan region, but outside everything else. So that is the red region. It has to be outside that. It has to be inside the purple region. It has to be outside the blue region, outside the green region, and inside the tan region. So this is definitely where it goes. And here is a light pleurodon put into our zoo. Okay, so that, uh, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to have a whole bunch of animals to place in our zoo. And I'm now going to go to the other type of screen share. Here we go, done. And good. Okay. Okay. Okay, so here is a crocodile. Um, can you guys tell me where the crocodile might go in the zoo? So unlike the other puzzles that we've seen today, this one is of course solved. It's not 
It's not for mathematicians. This is one just for the classroom and it's just meant to be cute, um, but also cover a number of uh, things that are, are curricular, but then add on to it this, this Venn diagram, which is, is mind blowing <laughs> to, to, some, to uh, some kids. Okay, so what do you think? Um, you can annotate on the screen here. It has one hole, so we want it to go into the red region. It um, has rotational symmetry, certainly not. Has mirror symmetry, certainly not. It has exactly a dozen squares. I don't think so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. No, has more. Um, has exactly a dozen. Is taller than this wide? No, it's not taller than it is wide. So the only thing that it, that it's true for is whoever put the heart there. Yes, that's right. So it goes into the red region, but nowhere else. Elvira, can you figure out um, where I should be putting this? I'm gonna shrink down this crocodile and we're gonna see which cage it should go in. Can you find out where this uh, crocodile should go? It has to be inside the red region and outside all of the other regions. Hmm. So I've used this puzzle from Inside grade. Inside the red region and yes. outside all the other region. That's right. You've got it. That's exactly yeah. where it belongs. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Next creature. I have got, uh, th these are all of the creatures that I've, uh, I ha that I've ordered for my zoo. And uh, we're going to go through them one at a time. Of course, we we might not go through them one at a time, but the kids can, and they can do them in any order. So kids uh, enjoy, some of them start at 20 and they enjoy that freedom. Okay, so uh, we're not gonna have that freedom. We're just gonna go through them one by one. Um, has exactly one hole. You, you guys can tell me which of these are check marked and which are not. Has rotational symmetry? Yes, I can take that. I can rotate it 180 degrees and it's going to be the same. Yeah, doesn't have mirror symmetry, I agree. Yeah, it has more than 12 squares. It's more wider. It's uh, taller than it is, it's seven tall. And it's uh, five wide, so that's right. So where does it go? It has to go inside red, purple, and tan, and outside everything else. Um, there is a version for people who are colorblind on, on Math Pickle. So inside red, purple, and tan. Okay, inside red. Right there. Yeah, that's right. Not, not, not easy to find. This is like not standard Venn diagram stuff, but kids are capable. So this uh, grade four to grade nine, I've done it with the full spectrum of kids in those ages. And again, because it's beautiful, you get a much higher engagement than you would with a standard puzzle worksheet. Okay, oh, let's make this big. There we go. So uh, this one has exactly one hole. This is actually interesting. <laughs> Sorry? It has one hole. X on rotational symmetry and X on the mirror symmetry as well. Yep. This one is there's five by five. It's five by five square. 
So what do we do with that one since it's going to be five by five? It's not taller, it's not wider. So is it taller than it is wide? No. No. So this has to be inside red and green. Where does it go? In the top right corner. Right. How do you put the hearts there? <laughs> um, yeah, whoever's using hearts, you can describe where, where you're finding them. You yeah, but the how, how do I do that? The top screen where it says you are viewing Gordon Hamilton's screen, you have a view option drop down. Click on the drop down menu and go to annotate. Okay, drop down menu. And then you go to stamp. Okay, okay. Okay, do. So now I know. Mm -hmm. No holes has a rotational symmetry, yes. I think it has. Oh. Oh, oh. Mirror symmetry, yes. No. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Has mirror symmetry? So we've had one vote for mirror symmetry. I think no mirror symmetry. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, it doesn't have mirror symmetry. If you try to put it like this and fold oh, it, you're, you're not going to have luck. Um, but again, that's something that some kids, you'll need to actually um, show them physically. So this is only rotational. And whenever you go through all of, the, all of these animals, you'll find out that I've actually made a mistake um, and that two of these animals belong in the same cage. And I have forgotten to order another animal for another cage. Uh, so they have to find the animals that are duplicate and they have to then design an animal that fits into the cage that I forgot to uh, make an mm. animal for. So that's, that's it for today.